Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Um, this is not obviously the typical scenery, but there's some really bad weather um, coming up. So I got off trail for a couple days and I just went back home to Atlanta. Um, um, but I figured this was a good time to talk about uh, some of the, or answer some of the questions that I got on my resupply video. Uh, the first one being, what is my first aid kit? which is probably more extensive than most people's first aid kits, but um, I trip, <laughs> I can get hurt, I can get blisters, whatever. Uh, yeah, so most people's first aid kits would just be like duct tape, leukotape, uh, maybe antibiotic, ibuprofen, and that's pretty much it. But um, I'm gonna go with the first two that, are, that have become the most important to my first aid kit. Uh, one being CBD salve. So I picked this up at a store in Hiawassee. Um, it is pretty expensive. Luckily, it doesn't weigh much. Um, but it, it's really nice to put like on my ankles when I was experiencing overuse. And sometimes when I get to camp, um, I'll have like this sensitive ankle stuff. So I'll put it on my ankles then as well. Just kind of give me some relief and even on my shin splints. Um, Another thing I'll throw on my shin splints is this Voltaren cream that I actually got recommended from maybe Reddit and Facebook, but I think it was mostly Facebook. But this has been very nice to have. It just really, it's for arthritis, but it really helps with the shin splints. So these have become very inducive to my success so far. Um, some more stuff I have in my first aid kit, the one of them being <laughs> this insane bag. So this one has KT tape wrapped around it and um, allergy medicine inside the bottle. And then um, ibuprofen and potassium because potassium is one of the leading causes of shin splints is what I've also read too. So I'm taking potassium supplements because I'm probably not producing it enough myself and I'm definitely not eating bananas while I'm out there either. Other first aid kits stuff includes um, some gas uh, That's mostly if I'm camping around other people. And sometimes like, it's just uncomfortable to be gassy all the time. And sometimes that's just me. <laughs> uh, I've also got band-aids and some moleskin padding, which I haven't even broke open yet. Uh, I've also got some antibiotic cream, which I'll probably squeeze into a smaller bottle because I don't need this much. I haven't even opened this up yet. Uh, other first aid kit that's also going to kind of include some cleaning stuff is going to be some of that Mrs. Meyers outdoor hand soap. Um, and then I've got some Hippocleans antiseptic soap, some Vaseline, um, and then this new skin stuff because sometimes my thumb will crack right here when I'm using my trekking poles a lot from it being cold and just abrasion. So that's really nice to kind of seal that up. Another really cool tool that's kind of first aid stuff, but also it just goes in the bag so I don't have another place for it, but it's a fuel transfer kit. Um, I'll be looking forward to this up the trail when I don't have to buy gas and people are starting to leave more fuel cans half empty inside the fuel box or inside the hiker boxes so I can be siphoning fuel instead of buying whole new cans. Um, I also would consider this a first aid because it's very helpful to your health and to kind of relieving any sort of uh, soreness or tightness. And that's uh, this vitamin C stuff because it does include a heck of a lot of electrolytes. So that's really helpful. And it's an immune support booster as well. And I just carry like a week's worth to drink every night at camp. I've also included this in another video, but I've got my... Um, my beet powder, uh, and then my, my joint health stuff. And then it's just going to be more electrolytes to drink during the day. So that is a food or not food first aid stuff. And I think that's it. And I also now carry, I've been carrying knee brace for both knees and I also carry a, uh, compression sleeve for my shin as well. I've also um, had some questions about food that I'm eating and I'm really bad about taking camp footage because most of the time it's, it get, like if it's not cold when I get to camp, shortly after I get to camp, 
it's getting pretty cold and the last thing I want to do is take footage, especially in the morning when it's still below freezing out. So sub 32. Um, so I can just show you some of that stuff here. So you guys kind of have an idea of what I'm eating and how I'm eating it. So before I was um, pre-making breakfast in the morning and just putting water in the plastic bag and then putting the plastic bag inside of one of those good to good to go baggies that are just big. I can't, oh, right here. So just one of these, um, just so it's got, I have like, make sure it's double sealed up and it's not gonna get all over my other stuff. Um, I'm gonna use fuel and I just cook hot water and add it to that. Um, that is both if I'm soaking it the night before and in the morning. So if I'm just doing it in the morning, I make sure that the water is boiling or close to boiling. I pour it inside the plastic bag, um, which is why I don't really like it boiling because um, I feel that less microplastics kind of detach from the bag and into the food. Um, so I just get it pretty hot, which probably doesn't really help, but it helps me mentally. And then I will throw it in this bag to make sure the heat is conserved and then do something else for like five minutes and open up my food of which is oatmeal, dried strawberries. This one has coconut shavings, um, chia seed, uh, protein powder, brown sugar, cinnamon, um, and it's just regular oats. So um, that's all it is. I haven't really eaten seeds and I haven't really gotten tired of it. I just, honestly, it's kind of, of a brainless action in the morning, just eat it. Um, I'm usually pretty hungry when I wake up, so just eat it and then pack up and I don't even think about it. So, and then for dinner, I'm usually eating a variety of snacks. So, in this most recent resupply I picked up, it's got some go-go squeezes, which are heavier than what I've normally been carrying. Some candy. Um, I got some of these zones still from the grocery store when I did a in-store resupply. These are honestly really good. They have 210 calories, 14 grams of protein, bunch of vitamins and stuff like that. So these zone bars are pretty tasty. Um, got crackers that I eat the other day as well. And some protein bars like this one. It's a Nature Valley wafer, wafer, however you want to pronounce it. And then um, I was also eating, if I sit down and eat, I'll have like a tortilla with cheese stuffed on the inside or beans or peanut butter. Um, Cheese and beans actually sounds pretty good to stuff in there. And then for dinner, I've been either eating the Snore Alfredo side with TVP and dried vegetables, um, or I'll just eat a ramen. Um, I've been kind of eating these first because these way more than the ramens do. So my pack just gets lighter. It gets lighter anyways because I'm eating, but it stays lighter because I'm eating the heavier stuff. And that's pretty much about it for first aid and food. So I also have some questions about post office stuff. Um, so I've already covered what food I'm eating. And as for post offices, where I'm sending it. So two examples, uh, one is in Maryland. And I think I have like maybe one or two in Virginia where I've sent them to post offices instead of hostels. And that's a because I think the one in Maryland didn't really have any hostels nearby. And if they did, they didn't say whether or not they accepted um, mail drops if you're not staying there and picking up for a fee. And I think same for Virginia, like I wanna say the post office was really, was really close to a hostel, but I wasn't really necessarily planning on staying at a hostel. Um, so it's gonna be either, uh, there are not many good hostel options. Um, they didn't say if they were accepted without a stay or there just weren't many around, and but there was a, a post office around. So those are mainly my um, my reasons for selecting a post office and why. And then um, as for distances, so I do check between resupply stops. So if I'm going 60 miles, ah, sorry. So if I'm going 60 miles from one place, to the next, um, I'll pack three or four days worth of food and then um, check where the next stop would be. So that would either be a hostel or a post office. And then I would select 
one of the two, and then plan for the days of food to be put in that box, as you can see behind me. So, uh, I hope I didn't answer your question well enough. Um, I will try to get it again in a video, or in another video, um, so you can just drop a comment, as well as if you have any other questions regarding food, especially as a vegetarian, um, first aid stuff, health stuff, etc. Uh, just drop a comment and I will do my best to make another video. Thanks so much.